Guys, it's so good to meet you. Um, my name is Kurt. I'm a, I'm a writer here in Toronto, Canada. Um, I work for uh, Movie Scene Canada, and uh, my own personal page is called Top Five Film Dive. And uh, yeah, I um, I just want to start off here. I'm I've been really pumped to chat with you guys. I've been looking forward to this. Um, I saw the movie last week, uh, and I gotta say, I was absolutely floored. Bear with me. This is like my my overdrawn kind of beginning here. Um, I, I was telling somebody the other day that it's just this powerhouse of a film, um, and I I absolutely loved it. And it's this film in a year where we've got sandworms and dune and minions and monsters and all this stuff but it's so refreshing to see a smaller scale film pack a larger visual and emotional punch than anything that i've ever mentioned um and and yeah. Jay, it's one of my favorite films of 2024 uh so kudos yeah. to the both of you guys i i absolutely love it i have nothing but good things to say about it so um so much Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. So, yeah, I mean, just to kind of start off, and, and I want to discuss something um, that was very personal with me while I was watching the film. Uh, and I actually got, like, incredibly um, and almost uncontrollably emotional. Um, and Clarence, I'll start <laughs> with where you and the fellas are sitting in the circle, and, and you've got Brent, played by Paul Racy, uh, who tells everyone to kind of close their eyes and just a picture a moment. Um, mm. And not just to visualize it, but to smell it and to feel it and to be present in it once again. Um and again, to, to get a little personal here, what is that moment for each of you guys? Is there something that pops into your mind first and foremost? I mean, uh, I think- Well, it, at that moment, uh, what popped in my mind was my, my children. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally, man. You all right? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, that's where I got yeah. emotional. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think it evolves for me. Like I try to actually- hear that and 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 be present for that when you asked it and i just uh today i went to i i have two children i have a i have a 17 year old son that we adopted when he was 11 and i have a, a year and a half year old daughter so oh. me too yeah. and i just went to standing on the pacific coast with them um and my son uh, holding her in his arms and both of them just looking out at the water that's where i went today beautiful Absolutely beautiful. So, Clarence, yourself, my friend. Oh, Clarence, I think you're freezing on us. Yeah, well, at that moment that it was actually actually that 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 exercise. Yeah. Us is. I'm freezing. Yeah, you I think... see me now. You're frozen. Can you see me? Yep, we can see you now, buddy. Yeah. All right. Well, actually, that that exercise is designed as a decompression. That's how I remember it. So that would be to uh, to to come down from a crash after we done done a play for four yeah. nights in a row, and this mm -hmm. is the last time we're gonna do it. We're gonna wrap it, and tomorrow morning we're gonna be back in that cell prison mentality and not yeah. rehearsing and not doing anything. And a lot of times, brothers found themselves in depressed states. Mm -hmm. at that time so we had to we had to put together mechanisms to uh to 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 battle that and that's what that was made for and at the time he asked me that i went to my children i went i went to a time when um my son was first born and i could hold him in my arm and i can remember how he smelled yeah i remember how my son smelled as a newborn i yeah. remember his neighbor was black because the umbilical cord had just gotten cut and that's where i went to 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 and that 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 always depicts innocence yeah. to me, but innocent time. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, that's where I went to. It was the the moment my daughter was born, fellas. And I just I been having a weird week at work that week, and uh, and it just kind of all just came out, and it was beautiful. And I'm just sitting in the theater with like my children again. Okay. Yeah, I'm sitting in the theater with like thirty or forty other people, and uh, it's very on early on in the film, and I just I just found myself like I was. Um, it was like a release and it was beautiful. And it was just something that I hadn't experienced in a film in a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was great. I, I applaud you guys because genuinely, like I said, it was just this moment of um, euphoria, really, like what they kind of yearn for is like a film, yeah. film right? So, um, and, and continuing on with that, and, and I appreciate your honesty, because yeah, yeah. I know it's be a good word. To not to get too, too personal, but um, yeah. I wanted to... Um, I really want to stick with that exploration on the topic of men's mental health. And, and I think that we can agree uh, that the medium of film as a whole is, has never really presented prison as this like place of tenderness or mm -hmm. um, expression, or obviously in this case, artistic expression and exploration. And, and Greg, I saw you two nope. package 
from A24 with, with yourself and Monique and Cliff. And you put it beautifully that the cast members got like literal ownership of their, their own story. And um, mm -hmm. so when you and Clint were writing the screenplay and all of you are actively participating in the rewrites, um, how important was it for you to get across that rhetoric early on that this is a film that is going to be drama based on the arts and exploring men's mental health, not that unconscious bias that the public tends to have when it comes to a film about maximum security prison. Yeah, I mean, from from the beginning, you know, because you your kind of world gets flipped upside down when you you bear witness to what's happening inside of this program uh, mm -hmm. and and the any of those stereotypes that you come in with a, a large part of at least mine were based on the movies I had seen you know mm -hmm. and to see yeah. them solely uh and very radically upended you know by this sort of beautiful space that was happening between these men I mean I think we were we were very conscious to not really bring any of the kind of gratuitous uh you know stereotypes into the storytelling process you know I think sometimes even just we're aware that there is darkness in these places um uh, it's a system designed to uh to bring that out of us, you know. I mean, when you when you grind someone down and tell them they're not human, consistently and very aggressively, um, that that brings out the worst in us versus the best. And then when at alternatively, when you set up a room that is asking someone to come in and and present without armor, uh the the kind of vulnerable tender parts within them you see how powerful that is you know like as shakespeare might say like the, the pen truly is mightier than the sword you know and and this was happening in real time and we were we were living it uh with these men very cool yeah and i think that's why it resonated with me so much and um like I've been a member of groups um, in that kind of circle-based social setting where, you know, vulnerability and open dialogue um, is that fundamental aspect to, you know, being able to reconcile with oneself. Um, and like I was saying before, guys, it's just, it's this beautiful, very poignant type of cinema um, that I, that I really don't see a heck of a lot of anymore. Um, and and I love it. I absolutely loved it from start to finish. Um, Can I say Greg, something real quick to that? Because you were talking yeah. about an era of IP and temples and all that stuff you know, yeah. this movie existing within that. And I heard it said by someone uh, recently that like, yes, IMAX is a theatrical experience, but this is a theatrical experience too. It's actually something more powerful shared than than experienced alone, you know? Absolutely. And I, yeah, I, I will agree. I totally agree. I totally agree. Well said. And um, yeah, and I think again, in, in the terms of like even just kind of recollecting back to what you were saying, both of you guys were saying about like obviously the process of of the arts program in and of itself, um, that group setting and and being vulnerable with one another is is essentially that key element, right? So, um, my next question was just in terms of Greg. I was reading the other day with um, from the Hollywood Reporter. Actually, they they had released something that described everybody on the film who'd worked on the film was being paid that same livable working wage. Um, I, I think I'm paraphrasing that. Uh, okay, you know, from Coleman, Clarence to yourself, your cinematographer, Pat, and you coined it um, hacking the financial waterfall. Um, and, and I know your production company ethos is, is just kind of hitting the ground running and stuff. What's, what's next? What are you guys looking for, for both short-term and long-term uh, growth? You, do you guys have anything on the docket? Is there anything after the Sing Sing um, uh, marketing machine kind of slows down? Well, within the Sing Sing marketing machine, there's not much time for for much else <laughs> than this. <laughs> but but both Clarence and I, you know, have dreams to continue telling stories. And I think you're going to see a lot more from from Clarence uh, on the screen. I, I don't know if you want to speak at all to some of your some of your dreams. Well, we got yeah, I I got a few dreams. I want to get in. I want to get in a good old western, and I want to yeah. do a. Uh, some sci-fi. I want to do a western and some sci-fi. So, I think that uh, you might see me in something soon. All hopefully. right. And, Go. And, for, and for us, you know, I, I think I haven't full. You know, this thing's always like you're developing and working on, and like wondering when is the right time to tell this particular story. But 
making this film has just set a very high standard, not not just for like what the movie says and like what is the actual work, but how good it felt making this film. Um, and and then also Ethos, our new company, has a vision not only to you know produce the work that Clint and I are making ourselves, but we want to start financing films that embrace our equitable um, philosophy and, and, and model of filmmaking. Awesome. And then guys, I'll wrap it up. I don't want to keep it for too long here. Clarence, I got my last question for everybody. Um, right now, across the whole kind of Hollywood landscape, you just said sci-fi, Western, um, whatever genres you're, you're looking at tipping your toe into, who is the one actor uh, that you really want to work with in the foreseeable future? Denzel. Let's make it happen. Let's make what, it happen. Sorry, what were you saying when you watched the trailer uh for the new gladiator? Buddy? You told me about like oh yeah, he stole he stole the show with one look, man. He just stole the whole trailer. He just looked up <laughs> at the guy. <laughs> totally show, man. <laughs> I totally agree. Totally agree. I was watching it and I was like, okay, I got what's going on. He's still got it. He's still got it. So, guys, if you're ever in Toronto, I know you guys were in, in Toronto for the film festival last year for, for Sing Sing, and, and that kind of started the whole kind of promotional tour. If you guys are in Toronto this coming year, I, I look forward to seeing you. I'll, uh, I'll be doing the whole sure. kind of press docket and stuff uh, during the film festival. So, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Appreciate it, Clarence Craig. You guys are awesome. Thank you too, brother. Thanks for having us. Thank yeah. you, buddy. Appreciate yeah. it, guys.